Before that, we will understand what is the meaning of homeostasis in blood coagulation. Homeo means always steady state. So uh, that is the meaning of that is even when we have some injury, the body has a tendency, has a capacity to maintain a balance uh, from the low so even when the blood is losing from our body, we have to maintain the physiological balance. That is that maintaining the balance between bleeding and clothing. That is what is expected in homeostasis. Now here you can see that what is homeostasis? Basically, it's a process that prevents and stops bleeding. So that is known as a homeostasis while maintaining blood fluidity within vessels. So there are two different uh, aims are there. One is to prevent clothing. And for that one kind of mechanism, one kind of process will be going on. An entirely different and almost opposite process is going on within the blood vessel. Within the blood vessel there is no clotting. The blood is going in a fluid state or in a liquid state. So here we can see that the body has a, and has a need to maintain two different processes. One is preventing the bleeding and by formation of a clot. On the other hand, body has a, uh, has a need to maintain fluidity or liquid nature of the blood within the blood vessel. So these are the two opposite processes which are going on during the homeostasis. And the purpose of homeostasis is that it ensures blood remain fluid in the vessel, but clothes when necessary to prevent excessive blood loss. So that is the aim of homeostasis. Within the blood vessel, blood should remain in a liquid state or in a fluid state, but blood should have a capacity of forming a solid-like structure or a clot-like structure when there is some kind of injury or, uh, or, or blood loss by other means. So that is the aim of the homeostasis. Here you can find the different phases of homeostasis. One is a vascular spasm, plated plaque formation, coagulation cascade, clot retraction and clot removal. These are the normal five processes which are involved in the homeostasis, different phase. So in the case of a blood vascular spasm, spasm means actually a contraction. Or a, that is a during, for example, some kind of injury, you have a cut on your knee, on your finger. So you can see that blood is coming out. Normally, the first phase of clotting uh, or coagulation is that blood vessels going to that, that finger will be undergoing contraction or constriction or the diameter of that blood vessel will be reduced. So that process is known as a vasoconstriction. Vaso means a blood vessel, constriction means contraction of the blood vessel so that less blood or very little blood will be moving to the tip of the finger. So that by, by that process of vasoconstriction, the body can prevent the loss of blood significantly. That is, if 10 ml of blood is coming, by this process the body can prevent it to reduce it to maybe 2 ml. So that is the, that is the advantage of vasoconstriction. Blood vessel constricts to reduce blood flow. The second process is known as a platelet plug formation. We have studied that in our blood in our blood different types of uh, blood cells are there rbc wbc and platelets we may not be discussing much about platelets usually because rbc and wbc everybody knows but just like rbc and wbc we have a type of cell known as a platelet so they are very small and also present in very large numbers sometimes when dengue fever is attacking the doctors will say that your platelet count is very low and you have to drink a special kind of food or some kind of medicine to increase your platelet. Because platelets have a very significant role in fighting against the infection, fighting against the virus and bacteria or pr protecting our body from infection. So what the platelet addition, there is platelet addition means uh, plate, small small platelets will be coming together and forming a clump or a clot. I will show you a picture of how platelet addition will be appearing. See here you can see that the platelet addition means this is how the 
see many platelets will be coming together and many platelets will be coming together and forming a, a uh, clo, clo, forming a solid structure that is known by the name platelet adhesion. Uh, I cannot find a picture here. So that is the that is the one important uh, uh, important step that is uh, going on here. You can see that small platelets will stick together and form a uh, larger mass. So that process is known as a platelet adhesion. Here you can see that. So in this of platelet adhesion. And you can see that these platelets will uh, stick with each other and, and after that process there will be platelets activation and finally forming a temporary plate. So by this process so by which what they are do that they will be doing is that they will be sticking with each other. These kind of platelets will be sticking with each other. Here you can see these small platelets will be sticking with each, with each other. See these are the platelets. See this is the this is the place where the damage has occurred. So all these platelets will come together and stick with each other and they will be forming a say, mass of tissue. That mass of tissue will be able to prevent the loss of blood just by capping the, capping the opening or injury. So this is what is normally happening during a platelet adhesion. You can see that. Then uh, next step is the coagulation cascade. That is the uh, different type of uh, proteins or, uh, are involved in coagulation. These proteins are known by the name clotting factors. And we will be studying about clotting factors uh, one by in another class. So about the clotting factors, they are basically proteins. I will show you the picture of the what are the different type of clotting factors. These are the different types of clotting factors which are available in our blood. There are about 13 different types of protein factors are the majority of them are proteins and these, pro these proteins are playing an important role uh, in the formation of blood clot or in a coagulation. So that is why they are known as a blood clotting factors. So uh, it is by the presence of these blood clotting factors the, the our body or our blood has a, has a capacity of preventing the loss of blood from the body. So these are known as the clotting factors. Now in the use of clotting factors, so in the use of clotting factors, what is happening is here. Okay, mouse had a problem. Okay, so so the so in the in the in the use of a clotting, there is a type of system known as a coagulation cascade. I will show you a picture of how a coagulation cascade is also here. You can find that this is a coagulation cascade. This is how a coagulation cascade will be normally. So there are different type of pathways are there, and there is a stepwise mechanism by which. It, the clotting will be finally taking place and about which also we will be there. So that is the uh, next step in known as a coagulation cascade. Then finally the clot contracts and get reduced into a small size or wound size. And finally the removal of the clot or that is known as a pipe renolysis. And that is known as a clot remo removal. What happens is that plasmin will be dissolving the clot after the vessel repair. For example, when some injury is taking away for some time, you will be having a scrub mark there. So, and uh, L, L scab there. So, after some time, because of the action of this plasmin, that will be removed. So, these are the different steps in the uh, phases of homeostasis. You can see that there are different types of uh, regulations of homeostasis. One by means of anticoagulant, another with the help of endoth endothelial cell, and third by the fibrinolytic system. So, in the so anticoagulant, their role is to prevent uh, inhibit clotting factors. That is, uh, anticoagulant means substance which prevent clotting. So, normally, uh, clotting can take place in the blood when there is some kind of injury or loss of blood from your from your body. 
and these anticoagulants are actually like antithrombin, protein C and S. These are some examples of anticoagulant. They will be inhibiting the functioning of clotting factors and preventing the clotting. So, uh, preventing the clotting, that is why they are known as anticoagulant. For example, when ESR is taken, the, we, will, we will have to add some anticoagulant and anticoagulant will be preventing the clotting. Then another type of regulation of homeostasis is by means of endothelial cells. They will be producing substance to inhibit platelet aggression. So platelet aggression is an important mechanism by which clot formation is taking place. Earlier I have shown you how this platelet aggression is taking. This is this is known as a platelet aggression. And, and our next mechanism is that Endothelial cells will be producing substance like nitric oxide or a prostacycline. They will be preventing the adhesion of platelets. Then we have another type of mechanism known as a fibrinolytic system that will be dissolving the clot after the cell repair. So these are the three means of regulation of homeostasis. Then sometimes different types of disorders are affecting the homeostasis. One is hemophilia, thrombo thrombosis. So in the case of hemophilia, it is a genetic disorder and the main problem is that there is a type of uh, clotting factor known as uh, anti-hemophilic factor. That anti-hemophilic factor may not be present in those, uh, those people. Uh, so that is why uh, they are known as, uh, here I will show you that what is the anti-hemophilic factor. Here th there is a, see anti-hemophilic factor, the clotting factor 8. That clotting factor 8 may not be present in some people. So their blood may not be having the capacity for clotting. So that, that, that is happening in people with the hemophilia. That is why, because they, have, they do not have this anti-hemophilic factor in their blood. So absence of anti-hemophilic factor in their blood will lead to continuous loss of blood. Even a small injury can cause a significant... Okay. 